the largest cryptocurrency trades in history. One River Asset Management has made one of the largest ever cryptocurrency investments according to crypto exchange Coinbase. One River has worked with crypto uh, exchange Coinbase to invest an undisclosed amount in cryptocurrencies, but it's got to be big if Coinbase is saying it's big. One of the biggest ever. So according to Coinbase, which carried out the transaction, its purchase represents one of the largest digital asset trades in history. The initial trades were executed over a five-day period at different, at different speeds in order to work through varying market conditions and uh, exchange uh, explained. So basically they've come in and done the micro strategy thing as well. They're not coming in and just buying one big bag of it. They're waiting for all these little micro dips to happen and they just gradually buy it so they don't smash the price sky high. But this is just one of many. These stories are coming out almost daily. Not over the weekends, we don't hear much about uh, anything over the weekends, but in the, uh, in the days during the week, Monday to Friday, there's constantly stories like this. First it was, uh, God, micro strategy. Well, first it was Grayscale, micro strategy, Skybridge, you name it, just company after company after company is coming out. These dips are getting bought up oh so quickly, which makes me believe we're not gonna see any major corrections for quite some time. If it doesn't happen around the 50K mark, then I am then I think it's gonna happen around this kind of 75K to 100K mark. But look, if it's still being aggressively bought up at that stage, and I'm not saying we won't say 20% retracements, because when we get back to the charts, I'll show you, we've seen them. But they last for two seconds and they just get bought up so quickly. The demand is really starting to build. This is still not the crazy part yet. It will feel crazy, it will seem crazy, and look it is, but it's just going to keep growing. Now please, uh, this is not financial advice that I provide you, this is just my personal opinion. It's not to say that we can't see a massive 50% retracement. We could, it is possible, but who in their right mind has got that much Bitcoin that they're happy to say, yep, $30,000 is it. The way I'm thinking of it, is the whales out there at the moment, they're gonna be looking at all these you know, predictions, radio, anywhere from at least 100,000 to maybe 500,000 to maybe a million dollars per Bitcoin. Now, please don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Bitcoin's going to a million dollars this run, but if there's whales out there, they're gonna go radio. Bare minimum, it's 100,000. That's where everyone sees it going, to 100,000, no less. So why would I sell any of my Bitcoin for less than at least half of that, so 50,000. I think 50,000 is gonna be very interesting. I think we could see some uh, really heavy uh, sell pressure there, but that might be when things are just heating up, and if they are, then the whales are again gonna to have to calculate and go, I don't know if 50,000's it. Because again, let's say it goes to a million dollars, Bitcoin goes to a million dollars, and I'm not saying it will, and I don't honestly think it will, that's not to say it can't, I just don't think it will. Let's say it goes to a million dollars. What's the retracement value? That's what they've got to work out. All right, let's say it goes to a million dollars. How far will it retrace? Let's say it goes from a million dollars and makes it down to a hundred thousand dollars. I don't think it's going to do that if it makes it to a million. I don't think we'll see a 90% correction. It's just unlikely. But they would be saying to themselves, well, I don't want to be selling for less than what the retracement value is going to be. I don't think anyone thinks the retracement value after whatever the next high is gonna be 30,000 at the moment. That's why there's no big massive sales and the sales that are happening are being bought up so quickly. I, I shudder to think what Bitcoin is going to get to. I have no idea, I don't like to speculate. I don't think it'll make it to a million, but I think 100,000 is pretty easy. At the, at the rate we're going at the moment, 100,000 is a, you know, a heartbeat from here with, again, the biggest cryptocurrency trade ever. Who's to say someone doesn't, some other company doesn't come in and make an even bigger one? And then someone else comes in and makes an even bigger one again. These are just the true early adopters. This is not the real FOMO yet. The real FOMO starts when Bitcoin itself is a trillion dollar market cap. That's when other big, 
businesses are going to take it seriously and go, yeah, all right, I need a piece of this. And I don't know where Bitcoin is right now. Let's go and have a quick look. We'll have to recap. It's at 600 uh, billion. It's not even at a trillion. So we'll come back to this. When Bitcoin hits a trillion, this is Bitcoin itself, not even the total crypto uh, currency market cap. When it hits a billion dollars, it becomes serious to a lot of other investors who still think it's just speculative and just rubbish and crap. It's only the the institutional early adopters that are here at the moment. It's not you know massive uh, parts of hedge funds and all the rest of it. Don't get me wrong, some hedge funds have get in, have gotten in, but they've put very small amounts into it, one percent, two percent. Uh, we did see that other one the other day, uh, Three Arrows. They bought up 6.1% of all of uh, Grayscale's Bitcoin trusts. Now, I don't know how much that is in their total value and what they're worth, but I'm going to say it's probably not much. It's probably, again, maybe 1%, 2 maybe 5%. You know, there's people saying now 5% is the minimum you should have in Bitcoin. And look, that'll just continue to likely grow till at some stage people are saying you should have, you know, maybe 30% of your total worth in Bitcoin. Now, again, not financial advice. I'm not telling you to run out and put 30% of your net worth into Bitcoin. Unless you've done the research, you believe in it and you're comfortable with it. I am not telling you to do that. I know what I've done. You need to make up your own mind. But it wouldn't surprise me if at some stage in the future, it might be years from now, might be a decade from now, they're saying you should have at least 30% of your wealth in Bitcoin. It wouldn't surprise me way down the line if people say that. At the moment, uh, I don't recommend it unless you're happy to do that, unless you have a really long-term perspective and you really believe in the asset. If you really believe in it and have a long-term perspective, you can do whatever you like. It won't matter what anyone else says. But if you're getting sucked in by all these other, you know, stock standard uh, people who are telling you, again, you know, all the traditional uh, financial planners, oh, don't touch Bitcoin, it's this and that, it's a scam, it'll go to zero. There's something really interested that I found here. Uh, no, it's over here. So here's, uh, no, well, we can just get onto this anyway. So uh, JP Morgan are now saying 146,000. That's where they believe Bitcoin could hit. I'm going to say that's probably a conservative estimate because they're not going to want to come out and say something silly like we believe it's going to 300 and it only goes to 150,000. It would not surprise me if this is a very conservative estimate. That doesn't mean it will get to 146,000. It doesn't mean it won't go over. It doesn't mean it can't go under. I'm just taking a guess and an educated guess that JP Morgan will not want to come out and say, we believe Bitcoin's going to 250,000 and then it goes to 150,000 because they'll just make themselves look silly. They're not going to do that. That is probably a very conservative uh, estimate. We'll have to wait and see. Now, where's the one I was looking for? Here. So here is something interesting I found. So this is on Yahoo Finance. Why I've changed my mind on Bitcoin. And I'm not going to go through the whole story and read it to you, but basically this person has just, you know, been putting off Bitcoin thinking it's going to go to zero and it's probably, or it's unlikely to go to zero, but it's probably likely never going to reach its all-time highs for many, many years to come, and it has. But here's what I want you to read. Everything that happens once can never happen again but everything that happens twice will surely happen a third time so there is a chance that something will do something once and never do it again that happens there's things that happen once in a lifetime but if something does it twice it's going to do it a third time and it's likely going to continue to do it and that is the price of bitcoin that this person is talking about they saw in the 2017 peak uh, it got to 20,000 and then it went down to you know 3,000 he thought it would never make it back there again or it would take years and years and years well a couple of years later and it's 10 times are the low so this is what i mean people's mindsets are changing and it's not just the individuals it's the institutions it's going to be government soon it's going to be all sorts of crazy stuff governments are going to put their wealth into bitcoin and ethereum and other xr uh, not sorry i'm not going to say xrp although look xrp maybe but we've got a story about that into other cryptocurrencies they are the future now, not all of them are. There's a number of shit ones out there. A majority of them are probably going to be shit. I think there's 8,000 different cryptocurrencies. I'm going to say there might be, you know, sort of 100 ones that can realistically be used and may last. And it could be even less than that. 
but that we're talking about the kind of currency ones there's going to be so many spaces for cryptocurrencies in the future bitcoin isn't going to look after all the different avenues that can be looked after on the blockchain that's more ethereum and i'm not saying ethereum does it all but bitcoin is going to be more uh, again that you know it's a currency similar to litecoin it's a currency now again i'm not trying to sell the litecoin to you i like litecoin i invested in it and it's doing quite well you've got to make your own mind up you know people think it's a meme coin and it has no purpose other than that you know pump of mentals as uh <laughs> ivan would say and look i understand where ivan's coming from i just have a different point of view i think litecoin is here to stay i think it has a purpose uh, and it will be the silver to gold uh in the digital kind of uh stream that's not to say uh, there's not something that uh, is going to be worth more because you know there is gold and silver and there's not really sort of something in between in those kind of precious metals like that but i think litecoin has solidified itself it's been regulated it's not a security uh, it's decentralized and all the rest of it i think it has a place uh, and will continue to be used and will continue to go up in value short of there being some fault in the code or you know something like that Litecoin's here to stay, Bitcoin's here to stay. Same with Ethereum, I don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, and we'll talk about XRP. Uh, that may have a place, but at the moment it's got some issues going on. But this is so true. Bitcoin has now done this three times. It's gone to new all-time highs. It's had its peaks and troughs. It's going to keep doing it. This is not the end. Will the returns be as high this time as it was last time? I don't know. Will the returns, uh, could they be higher than last time? At the moment, they're on track to be higher than last time. They're not on track to outdo the first uh, bull run it had back in sort of 2012, 13 and all the rest of it, but it is sitting in between those two. So it's not to say it couldn't still go higher than that again, and it's not to say it still couldn't turn around and go lower than the last time. We'll have to wait and see. But what I'm trying to get at is this is real, this is legit, it is happening, Bitcoin is here to stay, cryptocurrencies are here to stay, excuse me you just need to do the research and find out which ones you know you believe in and you think have the legs all right let's move on to here so we talk about the dip so research bitcoin's 6k monday crash wasn't driven by institutional investors so it says here following the highly uh positive first days of 2020 in which ex uh, bitcoin exploded to 30,000 to a new all-time high of nearly 34 5,000 and we're getting back there again the cryptocurrency reached hev uh, uh, retracted heavily so it was a 20 percent correction and i showed that but it got bought up oh so quickly and it's already trading at i think 33 nearly 34 thousand dollars again so I went to 35,000, went down to 28,000, and now we're back to 30 something thousand, uh, 34,000 nearly. And again, massive companies buying up silly amounts. And this is not the last of them. I'm sure Coinbase has a number of orders from a number of businesses, and this will continue to grow. I just don't want you to think that doesn't mean there can't be a hefty correction. There could be. I just think it's unlikely. I think the pressure, the buying pressure is too much at the moment. Now, simultaneously, the second largest crypto, so ETH by market cap, was flying to its near all-time high at 1170 before it went through a sharp correction back to 900. I think it's still sitting about a, around 1,000 now. It's just kind of ranging. We're just going to have to wait and see where things go from there. But, uh, you know, risk to reward ratio, Ethereum is only three quarters of the way to its all-time high. So who knows how far it goes after its all-time high. So for me, uh, I've been putting a bit into Ethereum. It has the bigger sort of upside to it uh, at the moment because it's not even at its all-time high. Bitcoin at the moment, it's in price discovery. Now, the trend is your friend, so follow the trend until it's not your friend and then, you know, you need to start taking profits and all the rest of it as long as you're getting in early enough. And in my personal opinion, not financial advice, you are very, very early. This is going to really start to fly possibly throughout this entire year and maybe even into the later parts, uh, sorry, the early parts of 2022. But no one knows. It could all end tomorrow. That's just the way it is. I think that's unlikely, though. But it's a possibility we need to keep in mind. All right. According to, according to information from the analytics company San Tenement, so-called mid-tier holders took this opportunity to collect short-term profits during these price developments. These are addresses containing 10 uh, to 1,000 bitcoins and 100 to 10,000 ETH. As the graph graphs below demonstrate the number of such btc wallets 
dropped by over 1,100 in the past week, while the ETH wallets with that amount had decreased by 523. So this is just traders. Traders getting in there, taking some profits uh, and looking for another good entry point. This is not the big money players or the long-term investors. It is simply traders taking profits so they can find the next good trade. Whether it's in Bitcoin, they take their profits from Bitcoin and they look for the next one that looks amazing. That's all it is. That is not institutional investors getting out. They're still getting in. We just went over that. All right, crypto assets. So Grayscale, they came out the other day and said that they hadn't actually sold any XRP. Seems now they have. Who knows at the moment? We'll have to wait for another official alert from Grayscale. But here we have Grayscale Investments has removed XRP from its diversified uh, public crypto fund. So not private, just the public one. Grayscale Digital Large Capital Fund. The move could yet uh, be yet another fallout from the current enforcements. So according to an announcement, Grayscale revealed it that it removed XRP from its digital large cap fund. Following the liquidation of XRP holdings in the fund, the funds were used to purchase more Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash. All right, so maybe this is uh, an official announcement, but again, from the story that I saw last time, it sounded like they had, but they hadn't. So we'll wait and see. But it sounds like they've got rid of their XRP uh, and they've got more into Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash. So look, this is not great news for XRP, but look, there's so many stories out there and a lot of, you know, uh, what do they call them? Uh, God, theories where they think it's all sus and all the rest of it. Sorry, the words completely lost me at the moment. Uh, but basically they're saying that maybe this is a planned attack on XRP so governments can get it cheap and, you know, all the institutions can pick it up uh, and it gets rid of all the retail people. Look, th that may well be true. Uh, but again, maybe it is just exactly the way they seem it is and the SEC has decided to get into them. But look, um, uh, Stella has really been doing well uh, since all of this news and there's talk that maybe Stella can flip XRP. Again, I'm not saying that's what's, ha that's what's happening. I don't know exactly what's happening. I'm only just reporting the information that I've been able to find. All right, uh, here. So again, yeah, XRP sinks li below Litecoin again after new laws like, from major investor. Uh, so where is it here? Um, one of the lead investors in uh, $200 million Series C funding for Ripple has filed a complaint against the firm uh, in the Delaware Chancy Court. So one of the early VCs, uh, investors, because they've now been declared an SEC, now they're even going against it. Uh, and so that's a second lawsuit that Ripple has to deal with. Uh, look, things are really not looking great uh, for XRP at the moment. But in saying that, it's times like these, and I'm not telling you to invest in XRP, and I'm not telling you to sell XRP. You make your own mind up, but the risk to reward ratio at the moment would have to be massive with XRP. If all of a sudden they get in the clear or settle and all the rest of it, the price could absolutely skyrocket from there, or it could go lower, we just don't know. You need to be able to work out what your risk to reward ratio is. For me, I sold most of my XRP, I still have uh, you know, a few thousand XRP there, and literally only a few thousand, not that many at all. And I'm just gonna let them ride. I'm gonna see what happens. If it goes to nothing, then I, you know, I really haven't lost too much at all. I've lost maybe a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks or something like that. Uh, if it goes to the moon, well then, good for me. But in saying that, if I see an opportunity to get into XRP for maybe even lower than it is now, or maybe I hear that you know all of a sudden the court case is over, don't get me wrong, I will put more into XRP immediately, provided it hasn't jumped 100% before I can. But look, even 100% from 23 cents or 22 cents where it is now is only at 40 cents. I made it to 92 cents. So again, you got to you know look for these opportunities. And I'm not saying there's one right now, and I'm not saying this can't go lower. It absolutely could. All right, Aave. So Aave price soars to $123 all-time high as TVL rises and fundamentals improve. So I'm a massive uh, fan of Aave and I'm kicking myself. I got into Aave's old token Lend for, oh, I can't even remember. It was like maybe three cents or something stupid. I can't remember, but I only put in like literally two, $300 and it has 10X'd. 
So, you know, that's great. I've turned $300 into $3,000. That's amazing, but I'm kicking myself that I didn't put in more. But look, that's just the way it goes. I'm just going to let it ride. Uh, I don't even care if it goes to zero from here. It was $300, but look, that's cryptocurrencies. People saying, you know, you can't, you know, 100x your money and 10x your money and all the rest of it. You can if you get in early enough in the right price and in the right coin. Again, I didn't even get into Aave all that early, but it has... It's basically 10 x since I got in. Unfortunately, it was only $300. But, you know, whatever. We'll wait and see. That could 10 x again from there. Uh, and then that's basically, you know, I'm doing pretty well off a $300 investment. Uh, if only Bitcoin and all that were doing so well. But anyway, look, again, I'm, I'm not sad about it. And we will talk about this very soon. All right, let's go to the coin market cap. So $933 billion, we're nearly at a trillion. And Bitcoin, as I said, it's nearly at 34,000. Now we need to refresh this. This is a little bit old. Let's see what's happened. 993, all right, it's gone down a little bit. So uh, 33, so it has retraced a little bit. But Bitcoin still sitting around there. So again, people are taking profits, jumping in and out. Gas fees coming down, which is good. Still 66 is not great. And Bitcoin dominance has dropped. So again, people are getting into altcoins. Uh, altcoins is the space at the moment. Uh, Ethereum dominance is slowly rising. And here we go. Ethereum, uh, again, it's over that $1,000 mark. And it seems to have found a bit of home here. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. There's a, a correction is absolutely possible. Uh, just on the likelihood of probabilities, I think it's unlikely at the moment. I think too much exuberance uh, is starting to come. Uh, and we won't see any massive dumps anytime soon. Not saying you won't see that from all these uh, smaller coins, you know, people get into these, take their profits, and then put it back into Bitcoin or just turn it into cash. But Bitcoin, I don't see any major retracements happening at the moment. The buy pressure is just too much. All right, what about movers? What's really moved? Stellar. As I said, we're just talking about it, and the Ukraine has decided to use their uh, blockchain to develop their uh, national digital currency, reserve rights. This has absolutely flown. Look at that. That would have been a great thing to get into over a week ago. But look, this is just the last seven days. Who knows how far it's moved since before then. Ocean Protocol, Cardano on an absolute tear. Avalanche, uh, OKX. I had OKX and it was one of my underperformers and I sold it. I literally just did a clean out uh, 24 hours, 48 hours ago. Uh, I got rid of Uniswap and made a 50% on there. Uh, I sold OKX ages ago. There was a number of other coins. Because look, it's like this. If you get into something and it's not performing and there's a whole lot of other things that are performing, don't FOMO win, give it time. But if it just keeps underperforming, what's the point in holding on to it? You know, if it's just a couple of hundred dollars that you could afford to lose and it's a moonshot, sure. But I've got rid of all my losers. Well, not all of them. I've got a couple that I still believe in that haven't performed well. But again, I haven't put a whole lot into them. You know, a couple of hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars into them. But yeah. Again, so VeChain has been on an absolute tear. Uh, so I re, I took my losers, I uh, put them into VeChain, put them into Cardano. Um, and again, even some of the ones, Uniswap, I got 50% out of it, which was all right, but it just wasn't doing enough for me. Uh, you know, there were others that are performing way better, in particular Synthetix Network. Now, I haven't put any more funds into Synthetix Network. Uh, look, if we get a good retracement, I absolutely will. But at the moment, uh, we can see it's already starting to come back. But that's not to say it doesn't, you know, take another 10 legs higher. It absolutely could, uh, but I'm just waiting for it to come back. Uh, Kyber Network finally starting to move. I really hope Kyber Network gets some layer two solutions going soon because all the profits that I'm making at the moment are pretty much being chewed up by the uh, gas uh, fees, which is really disappointing. And look, I don't have a massive position in Kyber Network anyway, uh, not in an overall sort of uh, grand scheme of things. Uh, but hopefully uh, they start to do well. Hedera Hashgraph, so that was one. I uh, just got rid of it. It had underperformed for too long. So I put, uh, I sold it off and I have uh, the cash sitting on the side. And again, some of it went into VeChain and Cardano and things like that. All right, losers. What do we got? Big losers? No, no big losers whatsoever. So there are losers, don't get me wrong. But look, uh, very small amounts, you know, single digits, nothing higher than 5%. 
Now we need to be aware because that's obviously things are getting a little bit crazy. I'm going to say a lot of the profits out of these um, altcoins, they're going to go either into Bitcoin or they're just going to be straight up sold for cash to have on the sideline. So that's what we need to remember. These gains aren't going to last forever. There will be retracements. But like Loopring, up 170%. This is going to have a retracement and it'll probably lose about half of it. Now I got into Loopring a while ago. Uh, it's done quite well. I've got my money back and some and now I've just got the rest sitting there to uh, basically ride. You know, it's a moon bag. Whatever happens, I made some money from Loopring. I didn't make a whole lot of money. I, w I really wish I hadn't have cashed out quite, not cashed out, but you know, took my initial investment out quite so soon, excuse me. But now I do have that moon bag. It's just sitting there and we'll wait and see what happens. And look, if more good news comes out about Loopring and it has a good correction, I'll most likely put some more into it because it has finally performed uh, as opposed to the ones that didn't perform. All right, last but not least, we're going to move on. Ren BTC. I saw an opportunity here. Now, I thought here was going to be a good opportunity to get into Ren. Turned out it wasn't. But what, what can you do? This looks like sort of comp capitulation to me. Now, I got in here. I haven't lost anything in dollar value in Ren. I've lost nothing. I've made money uh, dollar value in Ren. I just BTC would have been the way better play. So it fell through. So this looks like I'm losing. I'm losing against BTC, absolutely. I'm not losing against the dollar. This has still made money. It just has lost against BTC. But we can see here, there's some conflu confluence here. So it's been sort of support and resistance here a few times. More resistance than anything, but it's been support. So for me, I saw this opportunity and I was like, rightio. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But again, Ren goes up in the dollar value. I'm not losing any money in the dollar value. It's just the Bitcoin value. This looked really, really good to me. I, I looked at this and went, yep, this is definitely uh, another point where I'm just going to have another crack. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm right. And again, I didn't throw in you know tens of thousands of dollars or anything like that. I'm not even sure of the dollar value. I think it might have been a couple of hundred, possibly a thousand dollars worth of Ren or something uh, I got here. And if it makes another move like this, and this is against BTC, so not the dollar, so this is a big move against BTC. The dollar value would be, who knows? So all I'm uh, hoping is that Ren does have another sort of parabolic move. And I like Ren. I believe in Ren. You know, it's uh, it's a good project in my mind. You go and do your own research. You know, it'll be a gateway between, uh, you know, uh, Ethereum and uh, Polkadot and things like that. Uh, yeah. This is just something I saw. It's not financial advice. You work it out for yourself. And again, we can see from there. All right, Aave. We spoke about that before. So descending wedges. This was a bit of a descending wedge. Uh, got into it here. And again, this is just against Bitcoin. The dollar value, it continues to go up. This is it against Bitcoin. So this, uh, at the moment, seems like a bit of a happy sort of place to get into uh, Aave against Bitcoin. Now, it can go lower, but again... Even while it was going down here, it was increasing in its dollar value. It was just losing against Bitcoin. So this is where we are at the moment. So might be an idea to make another uh, make a play against uh, Aave right here. No guarantees in life. It could go lower, but that's against the BTC. And the dollar value, look, it could go lower as well. But you know, generally the dollar value, I've had very few that uh, have lost. I have had some coins that lost against even the dollar value, and they're some of the ones that I sold off, like Hedera, Hashgraph, uh, PNT Network. And again, I'm not bagging on PNT Network. It just was underperforming, and I I had other things that I could you know put money into. And I'll go back to PNT Network later. I'll keep an eye on it, and if I find you know it's kind of leveled out and not just keeps dropping off and it looks like it may have leveled out, then I'll look to get back into it. But I think I was looking here. This is the very interesting one. This is the old all-time high against Bitcoin. Look what it's done here. So it's this little uh, dotted line here. It's not bounced off perfectly, but it has bounced off, and it just keeps ranging here. And look, as long as this keeps ranging sideways, this is how it's doing against Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going up. So your dollar value is still good here. So for me, this looks like it could be a bit of a good buy. Again, it's at an all-time high in its dollar value, but let's compare it to how it's doing against Bitcoin. Uh, at the moment, it's in a real ranging pattern. It could drop down lower, absolutely, or 
it might just start to make its way up. All right, Synthetics USD. This has been one of my best performers. Aave's outdone it, but look at this. It just continues to go up in uh, dollar value. I do think it's going to come back down in dollar value. I think it's kind of had its pump uh, and will retrace a little bit. But let's have a look against BTC. All right, so against Bitcoin, so it's just ranging sideways at the moment. But ranging sideways against Bitcoin, there is no issues with that whatsoever when Bitcoin is going up. That means at times it's keeping up with Bitcoin then it's losing against Bitcoin. It's keeping up with Bitcoin and then it's losing against Bitcoin. But Bitcoin's dollar value is absolutely skyrocketing. So, so are these in the dollar value. Now, I would rather it not be bouncing around here. I want it to be doing something like this against Bitcoin. Now, this could be the start again. So, sideways motion. We had a fair bit of kind of sideways motion, even going down a little bit here before it then had this. So I'm not saying uh, Synthetics Network is a great buy right now, but this could be the start of something big, or I'm probably realistically going to wait for it to sort of come back down here against Bitcoin uh, to find another entry point. I think Synthetics uh, has massive things ahead of it. I'm a huge uh, fan and a huge bull on it. I wouldn't bet the house on it. You know, I wouldn't. Yeah, I just wouldn't be that silly. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are my biggest holders, but Synthetics. Uh, is a reasonable size holder along with Chainlink uh, and Aave and Litecoin and some other projects. So last but not least, Bitcoin. This one's uh, really dragged on for a while. Sorry, this video, I didn't want it to, but a lot to say, a lot to get uh, out. Look at it. Boom, it just keeps going. Now, 17% correction. It lasted like two or three days and got bought up. From here down to here, 20% correction. It only lasted 24 hours and it just got bought up. The buy pressure is so heavy right now. Uh, and again, we go back to stories like this. You know, Coinbase, they're buying off the market. This is not, uh, this is, you know, it's market driven. So we go back to here. This is what happens. They just keep buying all these little dips, all these wicks that go down here. They're just buying them bit by bit. They're not coming in with, you know, $2 billion and saying, I want $2 billion of Bitcoin right now. They're saying, I've got $2 billion. I want you to get it for me at the cheapest price over the next, you know, week, two weeks or a month, whatever it is. They want a good buy price. So it is just constantly being bought up and bought up and bought up. And I don't see this slowing down any time. Again, the bulls. Why are they going to sell their Bitcoin for 30,000 if they think it's a chance of going to 100,000 or 200,000 or 300,000 or 500,000 or a million? They just aren't going to do it, not in bulk anyway. They may sell incrementally bits and pieces here and there just to remain uh, liquid, but I just can't see any big retracements coming just yet. 50,000 I think is going to be the mark thereabouts. It could be a little bit below 45,000, maybe even 40,000. But if we just keep pushing through, then I think we really are going to head towards that kind of, you know, $100,000 mark. I'd say more about 90 because the low was, you know, let's say $4,000. So, you know, you roughly kind of, you know, work out from four to 80,000. I mean, that's, you know, a pretty good move. Uh, you know, that's basically a 20x there. So that might be the point where, you know, we really start to see some resistance. All right, that's it from uh, that's it from me. This has taken a while. I'm sorry for it being, sorry for it being a really long one. Hit that like button down below. Helps my videos get seen. Hit that subscribe button. I bring out pretty much daily content. Rarely ever miss. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train. And I'll see you next time.